Session 8, uh, cumulative effects uh, and multiple stresses. Uh, this session addresses one of the biggest challenges facing successful EBM, how to manage the cumulative effects of multiple stresses on marine ecosystems resulting from our activities on land and in the sea. This is a difficult task because of the complexity of the social, ecological ecosystem. The possibility of rapid changes in state and the lack of data on which to make decisions. In this session, uh, we will hear from challenge researchers on what successful management uh, of cumulative effects look like for hapu and how embracing ecological complexity may lead us to better management decisions. There are also talks on how this may be achieved with new frameworks that are based on principles that capture ecosystem responses to cumulative effects. The session concludes with risk frameworks detailing the ecological consequences of poor management decisions and how decisions are influenced by our perception of risk and uncertainty. Kura Paul Burke from the University of Waikato, uh, his whakapapa to Ngāti Awa e Ngāti Waka Emo, uh, is a professor of Mātai Moana at the University of Waikato. Uh, we heard from Kuri yesterday, speaking to us today on the degradation and recovery from a hapu and iwi perspective. Welcome back to the stage, Kura. So I thought I might do something a little different, and I'm not sure how it's going to go. One, I apologise for my sweatshirt, it says Hine, because I know you're not allowed to wear like logos, but I bought the wrong one, so aroha mai. Um, let's talk about this photo. So this is one of my favourite photos. This is a fai repo or an igore, and it's taken at um, our island Motuno, and I just, um, uh, which I whakapapa to in the eastern Bay of Plenty, about 13 kilometres uh, from the mainland from the big smoke of Maketu. Um, I love this photo because in 2013, a bad thing happened in that a recreational vessel sunk at the island, and the owners took off. They just left all their rubbish, like, and the lady left all her blumuses all over our kina, um, blumuses like big undies, over our kina and our pie. We're right in our big mahinga kai. Yeah, everyone laughed, but nobody ate those kina. Um, <laughs> and so our our little iwi, and we're not treaty settled. We're a little tiny um, iwi, and our little marae. What were we going to do? So we decided we're going to do something about it. And every morning we'd get on our boat and go out there and I'd get in the water and while everyone else was working, I would just go for a little swim. And, um, and around the corner of the reef was this ikore, this whairepo. And she would like, there was a little uh, sandy bay, a little sandy strip if you like, and she would, like, she would be lying there every morning. And I would like, I love you, we're friends, we're whanaunga, we're connected. So she would lie like this and I would free dive down and lie like, facing head to head and like send her all my love and then she would just swim away um, and then I would go to work and but I did that every morning and every morning I would do that three times and she would swim away over time she stayed and I swam away to go to work and for us this whairepo here um, she is a kaitiaki of our island but let's talk about our island works. So this is our island Motuno. Um, it's a, I said it's like about 13 k's from the mainland of Aotearoa and we, our iwi Ngāti Whakihimo, have held title over this island since 1873. Undisputed, undisturbed, continuous native title. So that's 150 years. The island is known, like for us, Motuno, if you look 
on that end, that's the north face of the island, and it's really sharky. Now, that's where you take your ugly cousins to go swimming. And then if you go to the, not like that, people, we don't want anyone to get hurt. But if you look to the left of your screen, uh, to the right of your screen, the south part of the, of the island is a nursery. It's a very enclosed reef. It's really, really shallow. And every time you go there, there is always heaps of baby fish. Not every time, but most times. So this island of Motuno is where those people sunk their boat. And they left it. And so what were we going to do? We're just a little hapu. So what we did was we put a winch on our boat. And can you see those um, inner tubes? Cool, eh? That's technology, people. Because what it is is you have the island is like a big face here, and there's only a very narrow gap where you can swim stuff out. Uh, we couldn't take everything, but what we did was we went and we bought heaps of inner tubes, or we, oh, we didn't buy them. We acquired them from the dumps. And we would take them down, and then we would fill them with air, and then we would attach to them to as much of that rubbish as possible, that rubbish that was degrading our mahinga kai, and we floated it out. Really, and we just kicked, like, we snorkel kicked it out, out through the gap to our boat and winched it up on the boat. But then came the cost of degradation of all this rubbish. It was really expensive to take it to the dump, to the rubbish. So we went there one day with some kenna, and then we had a little conversation about the kaupapa of this, this act of degradation in our mahinga kai. And so the people at the dumps, they said, if you bring us kinna, we'll take your rubbish for free. <laughs> and they would have big, big bins that they kept clean for the kinder, and that was what we did. So here's our whairepo, our igore. Can you see the mark in, um, in the circle? So 2013 was when the boat sank, and then um, 2016 again, um, she was there. And when I went back in 2016, um, she would... Like it's, we're free diving, so because it's really shallow, and she would swim with me um, for I don't know what everyone else was working. I would swim with her, and then um, in 2019 I was at work somewhere, and I got this this it was like a karanga, a call to go to the island, but I didn't because I was being way too busy. I was doing all these other important things, and the call was just stronger. And oh, I feel a bit emotional. And, um, but I didn't go because I was too busy being busy. And then finally, I went to the island and I knew before we even got there that I was too late and she wasn't there. And I delayed and it has been one of the biggest regrets, honestly, of my life because I felt that she was calling, you need to come. And I was too busy being human and busy and I didn't go. The impacts of degradation, one of them is regret, when we don't act. I'm gonna change that slide now. So for us, um, fai, stingrays, and fai repo, eagle rays, are kaitiaki. And I, I know for some people, it may be hard to imagine how that could be, but for us, they're known to, um, they guard and protect areas where shellfish, where we have a shellfish. If you're too greedy or you're being a dum-dum, they will come and give you a growling, swoop by you or do something. And I know for some people that may seem like, okay, but, um, um, one of my students, and I'm looking at her right now, I don't know if I should say her name, I will, no I won't. Um, so we were working, I've gotten taller, um, we were working and it was a real, it was on a, a shallow rock and we were collecting um, mussels. We had to collect 50 mussels, but it was really, um, it was a really gnarly, it was shallow, but it was really hard work. We were struggling to get our stuff and in the course of our work, we lost count of how many mussels we were getting. And then, um, and clearly we had too many because then a stingray came, it was just this little tiny rock, and just laid on the side in front of us. So as soon as that happened, the next wave was a rogue wave and sent us both tumbling all over the place. We looked at each other, decided it was time to leave, and we went back to the boat. So that story, I think for both of us, is where you feel um, like kind of stink or like, oh no, I was, you know, I wasn't that cool, I should have been better. But more than that, it's actually one of our favorite, favorite stories is because it's true. It happened. We got a growling, like 
We got a growling, and it was actually a privilege to be growled because it's true, it happened. And, um, and then we were a little bit better at counting after that. This, uh, this image up here, because I know you can all read, so I won't read it to you. So when you go to a marae, to some marae, to my marae, we have a waharoa, which is like a big entrance, uh, like the ent where you wait before you get called to come onto the marae. If you come onto my marae at Pokina, and Adrian's marae too, and Megan's, and Drew's been there, um, on the left po, um, has all our ocean species or taonga, and you can see those there, one of them is our rays, our sharks, and our island name of Mutuno. What happened um, with that experience when, with the boat sinking at our island and also getting a growling from one of the stingrays was that it actually gal galvanized our people into action. And I want you to look at this photo. Can you see that I'm the one paddling? Can you see how down it is where my cousin's sitting? She's telling me how to paddle, how to row, I should say. And it, it was a lot of work. But um, so our iwi since, well not since then, but what we do now is that we have really galvanized ourselves. And for me, it's that regret that sits in my puku because it won't leave me. And um, we do pest control, we do seal counts. Um, the young woman behind me is one of my nieces, just about to crash our boat, so I thought I'd put that up there. Because, of course, we have our rangatahi and our taiohi coming with us. Uh, we, we also work with the Bay of Plenty Regional Council, and we do um, biodiversity monitoring using uh, baited remote underwater videos and stuff like that. And I remember I said it was sharky, where you take your ugly cousins to go swimming, so we do shark monitoring as well. Um, each time, and we haven't missed since 2013 the annual events, and we, they're getting more and more. This is kaitiakitanga in practice. Degradation isn't just in the moana, it's in our hearts and our puku as well. And so, oh, and we have another project as well, which I forgot about, um, and it's called Is the Kinder Still Fat When Pohutakawa Bloom? Can you guess what it's about? Um, we have a tohu that when the pohutakawa flower blooms, the kina are fat and ready to harvest. But due to climate change or changing climates, ocean temperatures, everything, we think that our kina and our pohutakawa are out of sync. So we have a project where we take our, we've trained our rangatahi there, our taiohi there, our freedivers, and we go out there and we... Um, we measure the percentage of pohutakawa bloom with the biomass and weights and taste of the kina as well as using um, technology for our rangatahi. Kaitiakitanga in practice. Degradation can also incite us. So kaitiakitanga takes for granted the concept that people are a part of a greater whole and have a responsibility to protect and preserve our moana, our taio, that includes our spiritual well-being, not only for our taio, for ourselves, because that regret is still here. Oh, but wait. Oh, that's our, that's our whare nui tawaki moetahanga e pukihina marae. Guess what happened a fortnight ago? A fortnight ago, because we've been going out to um, Motuno for every two weeks since October for that Kina Pohutakawa project, and what, while everyone else was working, I was working too, but I met um, a new eagle ray. <laughs> and then, uh, and my camera was going flat, but I swam with her for probably about 20 minutes or so before other people came over. So I learnt my lesson. My lesson is when you get the call, you go. Don't muck around because you don't want to live with regret because regret's dumb. So degradation, it's not just a physical or ecological construct. If we limit our understandings of degradation to just a physical positionality, we are in danger of missing the key ingredient of recovery, restoration, or whatever word you want to use. Because the human and natural world connectivity and relationships would strengthen and galvanize our, commu our commitment and relationship to our moana and then ourselves across generations. Ko au te moana, ko te moana, ko au. Kia ora.